Howdy, April Precal. It is Miss Kosh. We are continuing the 312 notes. Um, so I started with the Pythagorean identities, and then I made up my own example. I mean, it's a very common one, so it's not like I'm all that creative. Um, but then we, I stopped here before getting into the inverse trig identities. Um, and I'm realizing now that I did not teach enough to my kids this year, so we're going to have to go back and figure that out. Um, so here we go. Let's, let's talk through this. What they're pointing out to us here is that if I have, um, if I know that this is x, if this, well, this is the x coordinate, and I know that my radius is 1 in the unit circle, I can find this, I can solve for y, basically. So we would know that x squared plus y squared would equal 1 squared, and then y squared would equal 1 minus x squared. Um, now, the thing that my kids, um, uh, well, the thing I see kids do all the time is that they'll just say, oh, well, take the square root of both sides, it's 1 minus x. No, 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 no. Um, think about it like this. If I have, um, that's like saying that um, uh, 16 is equal to 25 minus 9, right? Okay, so that's a true statement. But then you're telling me if I say, well, then the square root of 16, um, the square root of 16 is equal to 4, um, the square root of 25 is equal to 5, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So if you're trying to tell me, oh, the square root of 16 is equal to the square root of 25 minus the square root of, of 9, then you're trying to tell me that 4 equals 5 minus 3, and 4 does not equal 5 minus 3. That would be 2. 4 does not equal 2. If so, I will give you $2 million, and you give me $4 million in return, if those are equivalent. Um, okay, so... Here we are at this, we wanted to solve for y, so y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, um, so this is just geometry, Pythagorean theorem, and here we go. So then they're saying, well, we know that cosine of theta is equal to x, so theta would be equal to the inverse of cosine, and sine would be equal to um, the square root of 1 minus x squared, so um, theta would be the inverse sine of 1 minus, the square root of 1 minus x squared. Which leads us, oh, to the identity that, that um, these were the same thetas. Notice how we did this. Um, that cosine, the inverse cosine is equal to the inverse sine of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and then we can also say, we can, we can show that the sine, inverse sine or arc sine of x would be equal to arc cosine of square root of 1 minus x squared. Oh, goodness. Okay, I think I need to... Oh, there's the example one. <laughs> I never found it. Um, okay, I need to practice these a little bit more and use them with my kids because I think they show up a lot more in calculus, but it's been too many years since I've taught calculus. Um, oh, here's the example. Let's do this. This probably belonged with the previous problem, but let's see. The function is given by tangent over, over cosecant, right, is a fraction involving powers of sine and no other trigonometric factor trigonometric values. Okay, so tangent is sine over cosine is being divided by 1 over, what do we have here? Um, 1 over sine. I typically like to go down the page, but I don't have space. So this is sine of x over cosine of x is going to get multiplied by the reciprocal as a fraction involving powers of sine and no other. Huh. That's not squared. Tangent over cosecant. Well, this is definitely sine squared over cosine. I can write this as powers of cosine. Hang on. The function f is given by tangent divided by cosecant. Tangent is definitely sine over cosine. Cosecant is definitely 1 over sine. It could be a, not a great problem. Maybe they've updated it. Um, that, when I multiply, when I'm dividing fractions, I multiply by the reciprocal. That gives me sine squared over 1 minus cosine. Um, right as a fraction following powers of... Yeah, we can't really do that. Um, well, if so, I'm not seeing it. And so this, I know sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x divided by cosine. Um, so I could write this as, um, I could split the numerator. This is 1 over cosine minus um, cosine squared over cosine. So you could write this. This would be equal to 
secant x minus cosine x. So it could be to prove that this equals this. Um, I'm not seeing how to write this as just sine. So um, in my next video, I will let you know if there was a mistake on this problem or if it's already been updated. Um, yeah, as a fraction involving the powers of sine and no other trigonometric functions. Yeah, don't know how to get, oh, well, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Ha ha, okay. See, I'm telling you, I'm not familiar using these others. Um, let's see, if we can do cosine, can we write it in terms of sine this way? Not really. Do you know what? I'm gonna have to go look this up so, and see, if, um, see what I'm missing. All right, well, actually, let's end this video. Um, subscribe, come back, keep watching. Uh, isn't it great? You get to watch me um, struggle sometimes. So um, yeah, we'll figure out what was happening with that one and I'll be, get back with you. Good practice, go practice, subscribe, come see me, all those things.